This is Santa Color 100. It is a 100 speed color negative film, and this new film is from Camera Store in Finland. I say new in quotes because it's just repackaged Kodak Error Color 4. Even though the film itself is a known quantity, it's always interesting to see how these small scale operations tackle some of the problems associated with respooling film. Starting with the packaging, this is a pro pack of Santa Color 100. It comes in a very small box, and this is made very evident if you just compare it to, let's say, a pro pack of Portra 400. They manage this by foregoing the plastic film can and instead putting the film inside of a small box. Personally, I like this method. It saves space, it's less waste, and I'm pretty sure that any film photographer who's been shooting for a little bit has a ton of those plastic cans laying around. Generally speaking, I'd prefer this method over the plastic cans. Now, going to the actual canister itself, these are just reused cans. They just tape the film onto the leader itself that's just sticking out. This one used to be a can of HP5, for instance, and if you look at this one, you can see that there's that distinctive Kodak yellow peeking through. Kind of fitting because it's just Kodak film inside anyway. Alright, enough talk. What about the film? The first thing to look at is the film base. Generally, C41 film has this distinctive orange mask, whereas this film does not. And it does cause some complications when it comes to scanning. From my experience, most film scanners will scan this a little skewed towards the red, but you could easily correct it out either by adjusting your scan settings or in post. And here I'm just showing you what it looks like straight out of the scanner. And next, I decided to bleach bypass it. Bleach bypassing is where you skip the bleach step in standard C41 development. The results lead to less saturation and more contrast. And next, I decided to cross-process it in E6. You actually get some okay looking positives. There is this bluish purple cast over everything, and you could easily correct this out for better looking scans, but this might not be the best for projection. Overall, it still turned out looking pretty all right. Normally, when you cross-process C41 in E6, you'd want to either overexpose or overdevelop by two stops. But with this stuff, you could just shoot it at box speed and cross process it and it comes out looking like this. Recently, I've been experimenting with developing positives using black and white and C41 chemistry. It's where you first develop with black and white chemistry and then expose the film to light to intentionally fog it and then redevelop the film in C41 chemistry. I had a few extra rolls laying around so I figured might as well try it. On the bright side, I got rid of that bluish purple cast. It's hard to tell what went wrong when a lot went wrong. First off, the base is green. If you told me that this was some funky expired film, I wouldn't doubt it. Next, the rebate edge should be solid black. Instead, we get this translucent greenish red. And finally, the positives came out a little thin, most likely due to underdevelopment.
but with a quick and dirty color correction you could actually salvage quite a bit of color information. Eventually I'll get this process dialed in, but in the meantime, don't look at it. Finally, I had one more roll to shoot. I was trying to figure out if I wanted to trichrome it or push it three stops. Why not both? First, looking at the three stop push, the colors are shifting and starting to get washed out. There's a bit more contrast. Again, it still has that red cast and it seems like it's getting worse as well. You could also correct it a bit, but you know, Whatever. Overall, it looks pretty usable to me. Next, looking at the trichromes, they came out looking all right. On a side note, the scanner's auto setting did not like to scan these trichromes, and I'd get results that look like this. But some of the ones with the red filter did come out looking pretty cool, I guess. One last thing I'd like to mention is this film is prone to light piping. It's hard to see, but the film was actually pulled out to about right here, meaning everything right here was exposed to light and everything before that was actually still in the can. But you can see where the light actually piped through. And you can see it here where it leaked through the sprocket holes. You can minimize this by not loading the film out in broad daylight like I did, but this is about as bad as I've seen it. The more I shoot this stuff, the more I enjoy it. I like it because it's very versatile. You could do a lot to it and it still gives you usable results, but overall it's a pretty cool film. But if you like messing around with film, you should definitely try it. But don't do this. This is bad. <laughs>